Here is something that executives at Starbucks will hate. A union organizer, a Starbucks union organizer, has credited Bernie Sanders, Bernie Sanders as her main influence. So this is in the wake of this recent news that a second union in the Buffalo area has now uh, won their uh, their vote to, to unionize. So we are now seeing the dominoes begin to fall. And this uh, organizer is from uh, Tennessee. So she's in Knoxville, Tennessee, Maggie Carter. So taking on Starbucks, inspired by Bernie Sanders, the liberal workers the company has long attracted are expanding a union campaign to other cities after a landmark victory in Buffalo. And this is uh, this is Maggie Carter. So they are... This is why Starbucks is incredibly ripe for this kind of labor action. It's because they've already cultivated the kind of worker that would be for organizing. So they have tried to attract these more progressive-minded individuals. Well, <laughs> when you do that, you also are setting yourself up to uh, face these sorts of actions, which you know Starbucks should be welcome to. If they present themselves as being progressive, forward-thinking, then they should have no problem with the workers organizing, but clearly there has, uh, they have uh, been met with resistance. So more here from uh, Ms. Carter. So Ms. Carter, who began circulating union cards at her store not long after the results of the Buffalo elections were announced last month, studies broadcast journalism at the University of Tennessee. She is passionate about climate change, fighting racism and labor rights. And her political hero is Senator Bernie Sanders, the Vermont Independent. Bernie Sanders is my everything, Ms. Carter said. I love him more than anything. So this, of course, is not really surprising. I mean, <laughs> you know I love Bernie Sanders. This is, for me, he is sort of a lawmaker that transcend, transcends, you know, the Washington bubble. Where he is, there are, of course, there's criticisms of everybody. Of course, Bernie, there are criticisms of, of him as well as a lawmaker. But in terms of his actual impact on society, especially over the last several years when he became more of a household name, I mean, it's it's undeniable the kind of impact that he's had, be it on movements like this, be it on myself. I mean, the reason this channel exists is in large part because of Bernie Sanders. I was largely inspired by him. That's why I ran for office. That's why I then decided to to start this channel. So he's had a massive impact on my life, clearly has had a massive impact on others. And it's because you have this person who has been fighting for the same thing, for human rights, for individuals, for the working class, his entire career, despite most of the media, most of everybody ignoring him for most of his career, really until he ran for president. So, you know, it is such a rarity to see a lawmaker like this for 40 years fighting for the same thing. Despite every loss, every, you know, uh, the entire system working against him, the, his entire life, yet still he has managed to maintain this passion, this fight, and it's incredible. And it's it's no, you know, it's no wonder uh, he's inspiring people. But um, a little more here. So, quote, if you think about the kinds of employees they have, the stereotype of people that work there seems to be true. A lot of young people, Bernie supporters, DSA type, said John Logan a labor studies professor at San Francisco State University, referring to the Democratic Socialists of America. Quote, these are the kinds of people who can take this and run with it. It could be in Knoxville and Arizona, just as easily as in San Francisco and Manhattan. So this is going to what I was saying before, where regardless of where these Starbucks are, be it Arizona, be it Tennessee, be it, of course, you know, New York, California, you're still attracting a similar type of employee, a more progressive-minded employee, somebody who is more in tune with the likes of someone like Bernie Sanders and the working class and that and that struggle, that fight. So this is why I think Starbucks is clearly a uh, the epicenter right now in terms of massive corporations unionizing or their workers unionizing. One of the um, the uh, the main drivers right now in the the labor movement. So it, I just find it funny. They also go on. <laughs> Starbucks goes on to say they're not anti-union, but they're pro-partner. <laughs> like. It's all they have to be able to remessage this and like it, it make themselves look good when there's no way around this. You are anti-union. You are fighting these organizers. You don't want them to have their own voice. That's obvious. While at the same time, you're trying to maintain this progressive image. So I covered the initial effort to unionize Starbucks. Some may think, you know, isn't Starbucks 
don't they have a great workplace? Don't they offer all these benefits? Well, the reality is when you talk to the actual workers, a lot of that has been cut down over the past several years and including their pay. So if you've worked there for a while, your pay is not much different than someone who just was just hired. So there has been a, a clear cut to how these workers have been treated over the past several years. But even in that, re regardless of that, workers want to have their own voice. So in a massive corporation, especially like Starbucks, like an Amazon, like Walmart, these are these are the, the places where workers should be able, able to have their, their own voice. But I just want to reference this thing just to end on this. As I, I covered this recently, a um because this is the other side of it. You have massive corporations like Starbucks, like Amazon, trying to fight these union efforts. But then you have a small company like Vodio Games. This is the first unionized uh, video game developer in North America that was able to unionize and the management voluntarily recognized the union. And this is a company that already had four day work weeks. They already had all these fantastic benefits and management was like, fine, that's okay. Unionize, no big deal. Because they actually understand the rights of workers. So this is what these companies could and should be doing. And again, this is a small company. This is not, you know, Starbucks, Amazon making billions a year. This is Vodio Games. Most people haven't even heard of them, but they allowed their workers to unionize because they actually believe in their right to have their own voice. So, you know, it's incredible to see these sorts of efforts get more traction, be it Amazon, be it Starbucks, be it a small company like Vodio Games. But, um, I think we're just going to see more of this. And ultimately, this is where the center of power is. It is in organized labor. Because you don't really have, as the working class, there really is no pressure points on politicians unless the working class have their own organizations, unless they are organized, unless they have unions, to be able to put pressure on politicians to change things. So this is where a lot of this starts, and it's good to see a lot more workplaces are unionizing.